Hello everybody, and how is everyone doing today? Are you all well? Oh, I am so glad to hear it. And me? Oh yes, I'm still vertical and still above the grass. Thanks be to God, yes. <laughs> and what have I been up to? Well, I've been up to making all sorts of little small changes here in the simulator room. I've added a couple of things in the room to make it a little bit more easy to do things. I've also been answering a lot of questions that I get, you know, posted on YouTube. One question I get all the time, and I should uh, address this, is why don't I switch to Microsoft Flight Simulator? People tell me, oh, it's much better. The detail is so much clearer. The uh, maps look much better. In other words, the surface of the, uh, of the Earth. And I thought, well, yes, I suppose it is. And I went in and had a look. But I'm not going to be switching. And let me tell you why. I found out that they do not support more monitors than one. And on this, on my simulator here, the hardware one, just on the, the computer one, the flight one, which runs the hardware, there are seven monitors. And then the external screens, that's an additional three. So. Microsoft Flight Simulator does not support more than one monitor at the moment. Another reason is my hardware is not compatible with Microsoft Flight Simulator, at least not yet. People are working on that. For instance, PMDG is the aircraft that I use and they are in testing at the moment, but whether the PMDG will have the 737 for it is another matter. We'll have to see. I also discovered that people are using Microsoft Flight Simulator more for gaming than they are for serious simulator work. So I wasn't too sure that I really wanted to be in the gaming sphere of things because that, that changes things for me. It's just purely personal, of course. And then another one was, oh yes, I have 221 airport sceneries that I purchased over the past several years to fit and work with P3D. Do you know how much money that is? And if I went with Microsoft Flight Simulator, all of that is gone. <laughs> so. I have an investment in P3D. I'm not about to throw all that away. And the graphics being better, well, you know, the new P3D version 5.2 with the DX12 and all the rest in it, they have really improved the graphics. So I'm not sure really that I'm going to notice that much difference between the two, if there is any difference at all. So I know some of you would like me to switch to Microsoft Flight Simulator, but no, not for a while, perhaps later on, but not for the next couple of years, at least. Sound all right? <laughs> OK. Well, that out of the way with well, let me tell you where we're going to today. Now, Captain GL wrote me a couple of months ago and asked if I would fly between Manila and Hong Kong. And I thought, 
that's a good idea. I've been to both, well, I've been to both cities. I've been to Manila Airport, flown in and out of that. And I've also flown in and out of Hong Kong, but on the old Kai Tak Airport. I've not been ever on the new airport in Hong Kong. So this will be a first time. And I do remember very well flying in and out of Hong Kong Kai Tak. And this was back in the 60s, you understand. It was uh, very interesting. Let me show you some pictures I picked up off the internet to show you how interesting that is. Just look at these. Here's one showing you how close the aircraft comes to the ground when you're landing. Look at this. This is Cathay Pacific making its approach into the old Kai Tak Airport. <laughs> I'm not so sure that that slow sign is going to have much effect on a 747 though. <laughs> and here's another one showing, uh, oh, this is Virgin Atlantic making its approach into Kai Tak. And this one, I don't know which airline this one is, but it's awfully close to the top of that bridge. American Airlines, this is a stunning flight. Look at this. Here's the landing gear just going down and you can see the buildings on the left. Imagine if you strayed from your flight path on that. Now, speaking about straying from flight paths, when I was flying, I used to subscribe to Jefferson Charts and they would send out in the mail, it was all snail mail in those days, all the updates. Every month I would get updates, sometimes every week if there were major changes. And I remember getting the charts when I was preparing to go into Hong Kong Kai Tak for the first time. And I got the charts and I read the NOTAMs particularly, that's the notice to airmen. And there was this one cryptic message and it stood out <laughs> and I'll always remember it. And see if I can paraphrase it. It's uh, making sure that when you are on your approach that you do not stray from the approach procedure because if you strayed across the border inadvertently, you could be fired upon without warning. <laughs> hmm. Now that is definitely something that would keep you alert in the cockpit as you're making your approach, not to stray across the border. It was still British territory in those days and China had the other side and they guarded their border very jealously. Oh well. So that's what we'll do today though, is we will go to Hong Kong from Manila. And Hong Kong scenery, B-H-H-H, -H -H, is by Taxi to Gate. Beautiful scenery, really detailed. And Manila RPLL -L scenery is by Pacific Islands Simulation. Now I looked it up and I found that Philippine Airlines does the run between Manila and Hong Kong. Flight 300. So if you want to look it up, just put in PR 300 and that will bring up the Philippine Airlines Flight 300 flight route. We will start out at Terminal 1, which is where apparently they do all of their international flights from. And we will be at Stand 11. So that's our starting point. So if you're ready, Captain GL, let's go into pre-flight and get ourselves a flight plan. Shall we do that? Good. Well, here we are at Flight Aware. 
and we're looking at Philippine Airlines Flight 300. Here you can see the coding is PAL 300 or PR 300 and that will give you this particular chart. This one landed over 11 hours ago. We'll be following its route though. This one took off from Manila International, went to Hong Kong. It was on time on departure, but it was one hour, 12 minutes late. I have no idea why that was the case. Perhaps there was weather, I don't know. But here's the route that they took. And you can see down here is Manila. And then it's a pretty much a straight shot across the South China Sea into Hong Kong there. Let's see what the... Oh, this particular aircraft flew at 38,000 feet. I think we could do the same thing. We'll, so we'll put that into our flight plan. Right, let's go into windy.com. And here we are at... RPLL. Here you can see the wind is blowing across that little spit of land in that direction. It says it's variable, three knots. Visibility 10 kilometers or more, clouds view at 2500 feet, temperature 29 degrees, oh a lot warmer than England. Q&H is 1007, so there is some low pressure in the area. But, all important, it says it's VFR. Here are the runways. There are two big runways, but most of the big aircraft, they all take off from this runway at the bottom. Whether or not we will be assigned the 6 or 24 runway, I don't know. We'll have to see what ATC gives us. Now here's VHHH. And there it is. It's, there's the airport right here. Wind is blowing fairly steady coming off the sea there. It says the wind is 100 degrees at 4 knots, varying between 70 and 140, which means we could get gusts or we could get crosswinds, we could have anything. Visibility is 10 kilometers or more and clouds again at 2,500 feet. Temperature 24 degrees, Q&H 1011. So that's not bad and VFR. And there is the airport itself. Look at that. That is huge. That really is a big airport. Well, it's certainly a lot different from the old Kai Tak one that I used to go in and out of. This will be quite interesting to land on. Looking forward to that. So let's go into Simbrief and let's get ourselves put into a flight plan. So the airline, we are Ryanair, we are 186, we're departing from RPLL, and we're going to go to BHHH. And there it is, there's the, there's the route. And there's the alternate it's given us. We'll put in our airframe. Cruise profile 6. There's the registration. Down here it says schedule flight time is 2 hours 15 minutes. It's giving us a 06 departure and a 7 right arrival. Well, we'll have to see whether that continues that way. We are full. And we have one ton of cargo. You know what the cargo is, right? <laughs> of course you do. Champagne and caviar. And here is our route. There it is. There's the 
There's the flight route all planned out going into Hong Kong. Good. Now, only one other thing I'm going to do is in the altitude, I'm going to put in 380. Then I'm going to go up here, save the flight, and then generate the flight plan. This way we'll have a, a guaranteed flight level of 380. And here it is. There is everything. Block fuel. We're going to have quite a bit of fuel on today. 8,591. That's 8.6 tons. Airtime 147. And there's the routing. That's the important thing if you want to be able to follow this route. It is right there. And going down, let's have a look. Here we are. This is for Ryanair 186. And we are flying at flight level 380. And there is the, the route. We're going to need CI cost index 6. There's the average wind. We'll also need to put in our main fuel there. And we'll need to know our reserves, which are 2,840. And the trip and taxi is going to be 5,076. And here is the full route ID, all the way from RPLL at 06 to VHHH and 07 right. The other thing that we're going to need is just down here. We're going to need to know the information for flight level 200, flight level 150, and flight level 100. And looking here, Significant meteorology is the basic information. No tams. This is where I was reading all that business about not straying from the flight plan in case I would be fired upon without warning. <laughs> but that doesn't, they don't have that anymore. Okay, I'm just going to zoom down now and get past all this information about COVID and medical and everything else. We'll get down here to look at the weather. Well, there is a bit of weather to the south of Manila, but it looks pretty good going up into Hong Kong. Here's the winds at uh, 30,000 feet. And here's the winds at 34,000. Now this is the closest one to ours. This is 39,000 feet. We're flying at 38,000 feet. And it looks like, well, not helpful getting headwinds like that. And there's some strong headwinds up here. Look at the how many feathers that there are on the back end of this. So that is going to slow us up going into Hong Kong. So here's the route, RPLL, top of climb, all the way over to here, down to Hong Kong. All right. Now it's time to go into Navigraph charts and arrange all of the plates that we will need. So we click on flights, we click on new flight from Simbrief and use the one that we just made. 
click on the first one we'll want airport we'll put that in see it goes in down here we will need to know this one um, because this we're going to be parked right here at stand 11 let me bring this up so it's nice and large so we'll be here at stand 11 and down below these are the coordinates for the stands we'll be taking off runway six so let's have a look at the departure chart pretty straightforward not bad okay i'm going to pin that so now that appears down below as well going over to our destination i'm going to need the airport i'm going to need parking stands then i'm going to need to go in and put the the betty 2 alpha arrival so i'm going to pin that and we'll be coming in on runway seven right so if i go over here and go to seven right we'll be using the ils two ILS runway 07 right and this is the one so let's have a look so what we'll be doing is we'll be making our approach following up here going to Stella and then in so going in here we're going to be coming in on ILS runway 7 lines and there it is look at that it brings it all the way in to make to make our flight plan go to guava there 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 and hopefully make a landing on the runway and not end up in the sea okay good We've got everything we need. Let's go on into the cockpit and get everything prepared. There you are, Captain GL. Do come in, please take your seat. You've been here before a couple of times, so you know where everything is at. So let's get ourselves ready and we will be on our way to Hong Kong. How's that? All right, first thing, we turn on the battery and then turn on the fuel pumps and then let's get the APU going. Now you remember the APU is that engine in the tail. This is the one that's going to give us all the electricity that we need in order to get ourselves programmed here and in a moment there it is now it's starting to climb it'll climb to about six or seven and then it swings back to about four on the engine gas temperature and then this blue light will come on to tell us that we will have 115 volts up here right now we have 25 volts coming off the battery so we ah there we go it will run down fast if we didn't have another power source so now there we are we're 115 volts so first thing we'll do up here is turn on the IRS get that going turn on the galley emergency exit lights no smoking Fasten seat belts. Let's see if we can do it. Let's see if we can get cabin staff to come and give us a cup of tea. You think? Maybe? Oh well. No matter. 
So right over here, we'll do the left and do the right window heats, left and then the right window heats, wink wink. <laughs> and then here we'll turn on, we will turn on the probe heats. I like to do it sooner, it's an old habit of mine. And then turn on the fuel pumps. These are the hydraulic, uh, excuse me, the hydraulic pumps. The forward service hatch is open and the equipment staircase is down. Then here we'll turn on the APU bleed and there it is. There's the pressure coming in from the air conditioning because it is a little humid here today. We are somewhere around about 25, 26 degrees. And then turn on the steady light. So now we are set and ready to take care of the rest. Now I've got the fuel on board. I did clean the windows. I did kick the tires. So everything is set. And now our self-loading cargo is beginning to board. So now we are ready to do our programming. So here we are. We'll press this. It brings us into the position. We need to position ourselves. So we are at RPLL. And we are at gate 11. Let's see if it comes up. It does. We will put that into temporary and then bring that in. Right. Route. So RPLL. And we're going to go to Victor Hotel, Hotel, Hotel. We are flight. Ryanair, RYR, and we are 186. Go down next page. And now we'll have a look at our chart. We are going to go direct to CAB. CAB first, CAB. Then we're going to take the Alpha 461. Alpha 461. And that will take us to no man. So N-O-M-A-N. -N. Then we go direct to Sunny. S-O-N-N-Y. And it'll be the top one. Then we go direct to Betty. And again the top one and that is our flight plan activate execute go to fix we need to put in BHHH for our destination we need a four mile radius a 10 mile radius and a 30 mile radius go to descent go to forecast now for this, the transition level for Hong Kong is flight level 110. So we have to put in 110 up there. Then we want the, the, the values for these three flight levels. 200, 150, and 10,000. The Q&H at our destination is 1012. Descent information at 200 is 291 at 34. And then at 150, it is 250 at 19. And at 100 or 10,000 feet, it is 247.14. And execute that. 
departures. Now for this we're going to need to tune in to the ATIS to see what we have. An ATIS here at Manila is 126.4 so I'll put 126.4 in here Minuya Kilo International Airport Information Hotel 0158 Wind Zulu Visibility 142 at 4 greater than 20 miles Sky condition temperature few clouds at 2500 dew point altimeter 2825 1008 Landing and departing runway 6 runway 7 runway 8 runway 9 up left runway 9 up right runway 10 left runway 10 right runway 11 left runway 11 right runway 12 and runway 13 VFR aircraft say direction of flight all aircraft read back hold short instructions advise controller on initial contact you have hotel well we have hotel and it looks like all the runways are in operation so in order to find out which one we're going to be given clearance to we're going to have to get our departure uh, clearance so we are going to depart to the north Manila ground Ryanair 186 Swift Hotel request taxi to the active north departure Ryanair 186 taxi to and hold short at runway 6 via taxiway Golf 9 Charlie 6 Hotel 2 contact tower on 118.1 when ready Taxi hold short runway 6 via taxiway Golf 9 Charlie 6 Hotel 2 Ryanair 186 Well we are cleared to go to runway 6 which of course is the one that we had on our flight plan and we will be using the cab to Romeo departure so there it is there's the cab to Romeo execute that for our arrival we are proposing to come in on ILS runway 07 right so we'll put that in and we are going to be coming in on the Betty 2 Alpha, which is this one, with a transition of lines. And we'll put that in. Now we'll go to legs, switch to plan, and go through and find out if there's any discontinuity on any of our steps. So, you know, so far so good. There's lines coming around and it's bringing us straight in onto the runway. That's a good plan. All right. So, now that we've got that, we need to go into route data, route, and perform our initialization. So, we are going to be using. 2,840 for reserves with trip and taxi will be 5,076 which is a total of 7,916 that comes to 7.9 Manila ground Pacifica 5150 with India ready to taxi by FR our reserves 2.8 Double click this, it will bring in the, the calculation. We have cost index 6. We are flying at 380. So we'll put that in. The cruise wind today is 280 at 20. 280 at 20. The transition altitude, not elevation, but the altitude is 9,000 feet so we'll put that in execute and one limit we'll take the 28 degrees oh I would take the 28 degrees in England right now certainly ah. it's a long runway 
11,000 feet, so we'll go flaps 5. Double click this to bring in the center of gravity and the trim. And then click on those and it will give us the V1 rotation and V2. So now we'll be putting in that information into the rest of the instruments. So we'll put 38,000 feet in here. This is our cruising altitude up here. I'm going to leave that at zero for the landing altitude because the height of the runway and the height of the airport is 28 feet. So I'm going to leave that at zero. I'm going to put in our cruising altitude up here because we are presuming and because we're using runway 06 it is 61 degrees so I'll put 61 degrees in here I'll put 61 degrees in here for you too and over here 61 degrees that's our heading on our departure and the max speed is 149 for B2 so now I'm going to go flight director here flight director there press that press that we have green lights on both which means we have a good plan on the throttle VOR1 VOR1 up there Turn this to RTO in preparation. And we are looking good. Now one other thing I need to put in is the decision height at Hong Kong, which is 127. So that's our decision height when we get there. Right. Weather on here terrain on your side, double click for data, double click for data here, and we'll turn on the TCAS, there's quite a bit of uh, activity around this airport, it's a very busy airport, so we want to make sure that we don't run into anybody. Right, we'll bring up the stairs. And close the hatch, making sure that these two lights go out. Right, now we're ready to do our pushback. So let's see, fuel is checked, windows locked both, seatbelt signs are on, door lights are out, MCP V2 is set, takeoff thrust is correct, speeds correct, CDU flight is completed, rudder and air alarm trim is free and clear, taxi takeoff briefing, that is the next thing we're going to do. Um, since we're going to go to runway 6, we need to back out, point our nose to the right, and then make our way to runway 6. So, that's complete. Anti-collision light is now on. So now we're ready to ask the nice people on the ground to give us a pushback so that we can start our engines. Standard L and turn the nose to the right, select the tug and are you ready? Okay, let's ask the people. Cockpit to ground. Go ahead. We've been cleared for pushback and start. They want the tail to our left. Roger that. Ready for pushback. Tail to the left. Can release parking brake, please. Parking brake is released. 
brakes released. Which engine would you like to start with today? Left, what, number one or number two? Oh, you'd like to start with number two? Good. Then I'll switch to number two. Brakes released, here we go. And now turning off the air conditioning. There we go. The start valve has opened. It's spinning up very nicely. When this gets to 24, I'll introduce the fuel to engine number two. There we go. And we should hear the engines kick in in just a moment. Winding up very nicely, the low pressure light has gone out. There, there's the engines. And we're looking for 115 volts up here. We have 115 volts, starting now engine number one. Start valve has opened. This is climbing very nicely on N2. When this gets to 24, we'll bring in the fuel. And now we're looking for the low oil Push pressure back, light. Parking brake set. Parking brake is set. Looking brake for the set. low pressure light to go out. It's gone out, we're looking good. Steering pin is pulled. Watch for the salute release guidance on your right. Have a good flight. Thank you. And we'll go to Flaps 5. And we'll verify the data. And put it onto legs. The flaps are transitioning. Now I'm going to go and switch to the main engines for our electric. I'm going to turn on the air conditioning again, turn off the APU bleed and turn off the APU. Everything is looking good. Right, now we need to go over there, so crew, we are in motion. Right, brake is off, and we'll give a little boost to the engines. Before I do that, I'm going to start the map so you can follow our route. There we are, we're at the bottom, so now we have to go down to, to G9, turn right, and then go on that route. So, there we go.
coming in. Well, we'll go over these lines and then Oh, I bet you he's going to be called off. Look at that. Look at that. And he's down. Good. Put the brake on. And we'll ask the ground to give us clearance. Manila Tower, 1186 at Longway 6, ready for takeoff departure to the north. World Travel Niner 250, contact ground on 121.9, orbit 2963, cleared for takeoff, runway 13, Ryanair 186, hold short, runway 6, orbit 1822, exit runway when able, 121.9, World Travel Niner 250, hold short, runway 6, Ryanair 186, well, we're holding short runway 6. Runway 13, orbit 2, minus 6, 3. Manila Tower, Pacifica, 9025 is 1, 1 mile southwest inbound ILS runway 6 approach. Orbit 1822, exit runway when able. Pacifica, 9025, Manila Tower, fly straight in runway 6, altimeter 1008. Make straight in runway 6, Pacifica, 9025. Well, I hope we get our clearance to depart before the other one comes in. Recall is checked. Flight controls checked. Flaps. We have green lights. Stabilizer trim is correct. One eight two two. Exit one eight two two. 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 One e
the detail. We were talking about the graphics and whether or not they were any better than Microsoft Flight Simulator. But look at that. That is pretty detailed to me. I'd say we've got some very good graphics. And I'm using Active Sky for my weather. And so the weather depiction is real live weather at this particular hour. Look at that. That is pretty good. You've got to, you've got to admit that we do have really good weather conditions here and great graphics. Alright, switching off the center tanks. 10,000 feet, lights are off. Going to standard and fasten seat belts are off. Everything is looking good. Alright, Captain GL, we have a few hours to go. Well, a couple of hours anyway before we get to Hong Kong. We'll be flying up over parts of the Philippines and climbing to 38,000 feet for our cruise. And if you like, go on into the main cabin, get some of that champagne and caviar. And then when we're on our approach and descent to come into Hong Kong, I'll make sure that you are notified by our ever vigilant staff to come back into the cabin and assist me in landing at the new Hong Kong International Airport. Okay? Brilliant. Captain GL, do come in, take your seat again. Did you enjoy the champagne and caviar? Oh, good. And did you enjoy the in-flight entertainment today? All those Bruce Lee films, since we are coming into uh, Hong Kong, you know. <laughs> oh my goodness, look at all the detail over there. Splendid. Oh my, right, we are coming up on Waypoint Guava and we are cleared to land on runway 7 right, exactly as we planned, we are currently 213 miles an hour and now we're just making our turn onto downwind. So we are now downwind to land on runway 7 right. Seatbelt signs are on, no smoking sign is on. I have the main lights on but not the retract. And everything is looking good across the board. We have more than enough fuel so we are on track. seats. 
to that's one we need to start to slow ourselves up now
now I can see the airport. It's just appearing beyond the headland there. All lights are on. Everything is good. Check. Attendance secure for landing. Here we are. We're starting our turn to intercept final. to work. 
be at six. There's Juliet seven. And Juliet eight will put us in the vicinity of where we need to be. Yes, indeed. This is Juliet 8. This is where all of the airliners are going, and Ryanair is going to join them. Passengers are disembarking. Right. And APU off, battery off, shutdown is complete. And well, there you are. We made it. We made it in one piece. Some beautiful scenery around here very detailed. As I said earlier, everybody's touting Microsoft Flight Simulator as having the best graphics, but from what I saw coming in here, and I don't have Orbix or anything like that, I just have standard P3D version 5.2. The graphics and the detail is extraordinary. So, Captain GL, I hope that you enjoyed your flight and 
I will see everyone else on the next flight of Ryanair 186. Enjoy your day. Bye.